So choosing your first surf skate can be an overwhelming experience. I know this because I went through this process about five years ago now, and I made a lot of mistakes. And so I wanted to put this video together to share my perspective of the things that I wish I knew when I first got started to hopefully help you. Let me get this out of the way now. If you are here and are searching for the most technically perfect surf skate trainer to improve your surfing technique, this ain't it, dog. While surfing is one of my favorite things to do, I use surf skates first and foremost to have fun. And if it improves my technique along the way, great. By the way, if you don't have a solid understanding or grasp of the parts of your setup, I'd recommend you download our skate setup handbook, a free 17 page PDF that covers everything I wish I knew when I first got started. All right, let's begin by talking about surf skate trucks. You're probably already aware of this, but if not, when it comes to surf skate trucks, it really boils down to two types, pivoting trucks and bushing based trucks. To keep this as simple as possible, if you want something to pump from a standstill, then a pivoting surf skate adapter truck is the way to go. If you want something that's a little more stable or easier to push for longer distances, you should look into bushing based trucks. You could go the route of customizing and building your own setup from the start, but that is going to require a lot more trial and error. And I would just recommend buying a complete because it'll just take a lot of the guesswork out and get you rolling quick. I forgot specifically where I read this and in no way do I want to take credit for it, but it's too good not to share. Think of a pivoting surf skate adapter like the first gear on a mountain bike. Easy to accelerate, but won't carry your momentum that far. A bushing based truck, on the other hand, is like a bike in a higher gear. It takes more to accelerate, but once you do, it'll take you further. I wish someone explained it to me like that sooner, but I'm curious, for those of you that are a little more experienced in your surf skate journey, what do you think? Do you think that's a good way to explain it or no? Another thing that I think is often overlooked and I wish someone told me is that riding surf skate trucks fakie, aka just riding backwards, is pretty sketchy. So if you have the intention of doing a lot of slides and riding backwards or riding mini ramps and doing rock to fakies, then I would probably just consider RKPs or TKPs. But if you have the intention of just pumping the corners of bowls and just maintaining for the most part the same direction, then sure, surf skates are fun for that. Now let's talk about wheelbase, which if you have started your research journey already, you have probably come across people screaming from the rooftops that wheelbase is one of the most important factors. And that's true. It really affects how your setup feels to turn and pump. In general, a smaller wheelbase will have a tighter turning radius, while a larger one will have a wider turning radius. Now, here's probably the biggest thing I wish I knew, which is how wheelbase is measured and advertised across all brands. The standard way is from the inner bolt holes the front two on the rear of your deck and the back two on the front of your deck. So when you see wheelbase on a brand's website, that's how they're measuring it unless noted otherwise. Now the confusing part is that it's not an accurate representation of the axle to axle wheelbase because each surf skate truck is angled and offset differently. If you're confused, Let's just visualize it. This deck has a standard wheelbase, AKA the wheelbase that's being advertised of 17 inches. When I put the Yao Meraki system on it, that adds about one and a quarter inch, making the axle to axle wheelbase around 18 and a quarter inches. I think the follow-up question to that now is like, how the fudge do I know what wheelbase is solid for me if I've never tested any surf skates before? Well, there are so many formulas that try to tackle this problem. I honestly wish someone just told me, pick a surf skate in the 16 to 19 inch range, and that's a solid starting point. If you do want to go deeper on this topic, because I realize that's a, a bold blanket statement that I just made, uh, Steve over at Surf Skate Love has a bunch of videos that, that cover wheelbase, and I know a lot of people have found them very helpful. One of my mistakes was, 
I started going too deep into my research and really was like stuck in analysis paralysis. And ultimately, that was just less time of me actually getting outside, carving, cruising, and improving my physical and mental health. All right, now let's talk about the deck characteristics. Honestly, the biggest thing I wish I knew about surfskate decks is to avoid the ones that aggressively taper towards the nose and tail. So my advice would just be look for a deck in the 10 to 11 inch ish ish range. You know, you don't have to go super specific, something that doesn't really taper. I think you'll be better off because it'll just give you more deck space for your feet to sit comfortably. And so you can pick up the basics. All right, let's talk about wheel characteristics, starting with the size. When you see wheels referred to as 65, 66, 68, 70, etc., they're referring to the diameter. And most surfskate completes come with wheels in the 65 to 70 millimeter range. This seems to be the sweet spot, and you probably won't really have to think about this if you're buying a complete, but I just want to plant the seed because eventually once you start customizing, you will want to know this. Now the wheel hardness, aka durometer, is also a significant factor. A harder wheel will slide out easier, while a softer one will grip more. Something I wish I learned sooner about wheels is that urethane formulas are gonna vary from brand to brand. There are different chemical ratios and curing processes at play. I don't wanna go too deep here, but I think that's just something I learned way later than I should have. Another thing to pay attention to is the edge or lip of your wheel. Sharp lips are probably the most common since they are the grippiest. And I think it's fair to say that most of us surf skating want that deep carving experience without sliding out. But if you do want to slide out, a rounded lip and stone ground contact patch is the move. It just depends on how you plan on riding. The core of your wheel is where your bearings sit and can be placed in the center, just off to the side, or all the way to the side. Generally speaking, center set wheels will be more likely to slide out because it distributes your weight evenly, while offset and side set will grip more because of their larger lips. Now there is a deep, deep rabbit hole that you can go down upgrading and customizing your setup. For example, you could experiment with different wheelbases, decks, wheels, bushings, angled riser pads, you name it. You also still might be wondering why I didn't cover bearings, hardware, or grip. And in my opinion, it's just not as important when it comes to picking your surf skate trucks, deck, and wheels. Another thing that I wish I did sooner was join a bunch of slalom and LDP Facebook groups and just lurk and see what type of setups are being posted there because those disciplines are on a another level when it comes to analyzing customizing, upgrading their setups. I know some of you experienced surf skate veterans out there probably have some incredible knowledge bombs to drop. So yeah, comment below. I also want to start experimenting with a more free flowing, longer format type video, if that makes any sense. Uh, so if you have any surf skate questions, drop them in the comments as well, and I'll most likely get to them in an upcoming video.